In today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to build the fastest gold and XP farm on Bedrock Edition. It spawns in a ridiculous amount of zombie piglins and it's going to get you all the gold you could ever want. Hello everybody, my name is Prowl and today we're going to be working on a gold farm. Yeah, that's right. We have an awesome gold farm design here that I want to show you. Actually, it's this is just a piece of it. I got a lot more to show you. This thing is absolutely awesome. It's going to get you a lot of gold. Let's hop in. A couple things to note before we get started. This is a portal ticking gold farm design. This design is unique to Bedrock Edition, does not work on Java Edition, and it uses the method of flickering portals on and off really fast to spawn these guys, Ziglins. These Ziglins, they spawn in with a chance based on the number of portal tiles available. So the larger the portal, the more of a chance that a Ziglin's gonna spawn. They always spawn on the positive side of a portal. So the positive X or the positive Z, depending on which way that you're facing. And they always spawn towards the bottom of the portal. Yes, the portal does have to be maximum height as well because it still counts towards how frequently they will spawn in. And we use a few tricks here to make this thing work incredibly fast. And I'm gonna show you how to take these two portal sets of portals and tie them in together into one farm. I did use a couple of different drop methods here. Uh, we will be using this one right here with the Trident Killer today. You can drop them without a Trident Killer, although it is not anywhere near as efficient to just drop kill them because when you have these Ziglins being spawned in by the portals, it does ignore all mob caps. So killing them fast does help reduce lag, other than that though, killing them fast doesn't really have much of a benefit. They'll still spawn in at the same speed regardless. Also, the design we're using will work on both uh, fire tick and non fire tick on worlds. So you can use the dispenser method here with flint and steel in it to light the portal. And it'll work no matter what type of world you're playing on. And just so you know, there are methods you can use that actually use lava to light the portal. So it is cheaper. You don't have to use flint and steel. I'm not gonna show you that method today, but I will tell you that I'll link you down to a video uh, in the description below that will show you a Navy Nexus video on how to make the lava portion. You can use the lava portion and the lighting portion that he uses for the, uh, the water bucket, the redstone there, to do the exact same thing that I'm doing here with the rest of the portal layout and the kill chamber. So without further ado, Let's jump in. Now we're gonna build this in a brand new world and you can build this farm anywhere in the overworld. You cannot build it in the nether, you cannot build it in the end, but if you wanna build it by a mountain or in an ice biome, you could do it. If you wanna build it way down low in a cave, you could do it down there. And if you want to build it really high above an ocean, you could do it there too. It does not matter where you put it. You do not have to do any spawn proofing for this farm. So do not worry about those things. Pick your location. You're going to need yourself a decent amount of height available. Um, we'll go over that here in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get us a little platform started up here. Okay, so we're up in the air and you may be wondering what this is I have here. Well, this is the corner of four different chunks and I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about chunks if you want to figure out how to find chunk borders I would just google it on uh, YouTube right now you'll find out how to find your chunk borders um, I have an add-on pack you see in the top right hand corner of my screen it says chunk border chunk edge right so I have an add-on that helps me with this that'll work for Windows or um, mobile you can get the add-on from my discord channel just join my discord the links down in the description below and um, there's other ways that you can calculate chunk borders as well, but it is very important for this farm We build it in a chunk border because this will make it work fast Okay, so what we want to do is we want to come over to the the corner of our chunks and We want to go out diagonally too, so about to right there, right? And we're gonna go up 32 blocks from the, the block that you're standing at and we're gonna build some huge portals like you guys saw earlier and We're gonna do that in all four. So let me go up 32 blocks so we're up to 32 blocks and we're just going to mark all four of our portals right now. So we're going to go over one, two, three, four. And then the fifth block will be the obsidian, I think, maybe. Yes. Yes, yeah, feels right. OK, and it will go one, two, three, four obsidian and then one, two, three, four 
obsidian. Now these are actually the corners of our, oh, let me fly here, just to make my life a little bit easier, of our first four portals. And we could decide to go either way with this. I can either take them out in this direction, or I could take them out in this direction right here. It doesn't really matter which way we go. In my particular case here, I guess we're gonna go this way. And we're gonna count out 23 blocks in that direction and then 23 blocks in this direction and make a big square. Okay, now once we have all four of our portals, and again, they're 23 wide by 23 tall, and the reason we use that number, it is the maximum size that you can make a portal, and we talked about why maximum size was important earlier. And you could tell we got the size right here. We didn't make it too big anyways by the fact that we can light, we can light all of them, and they do light. Um, you, you guys can't, if you wanted to test it, you can't punch it like I can because I'm in creative. You could just break this block right here and that will break the portal for you. You don't need it to be lit yet, so don't worry about lighting it. So now we need to know what side of the portal are our zombie piglins or ziglins going to spawn on. Well, in this case, it's going to be this side right here because this is the positive direction. They spawn on the positive side of the X coordinate that you can see in the top left hand corner of the screen here. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to filter all of these guys into a particular area. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to put maybe a couple rows of this here, a couple rows of this here, and then maybe we'll bring it down one, two, three. We'll come down three. I think that'll be good. And then we are going to make a floor out of this too, right? So we'll make a wall in the back here that covers all of this. We will wall off the sides and we'll come out, let's see, one, two. We might change that here in a second and we do need a floor as well so we'll go ahead and put in a floor and when you can make life easy on yourself for, so from this back wall right here we've, we've gone out eight blocks for the floor because that's how far water flows so instead of having to block off all of the water at the end from flowing over the edge if we make our our little floor here eight blocks wide we don't have to do that it makes things nice and easy now what we're going to want to do here is we actually want to take our piglins and flow them this way and then we need to make this floor over here and we want to take our piglins and flow them this way so let me make this floor i'll show you how to make the flow okay both platforms are here we want to start running our ziglins down this direction so what we're going to do is actually quite simple we're going to come down one block and then we know water can flow eight blocks in this direction right so we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight now we need to make sure our water does not flow out and our ziglins do not get out so we're gonna come up you know a few blocks over here and then we can, how about use glass? Cause I always like to see things. So we're gonna use some glass over here and then we're going to cover up this area. Now our water cannot escape and our ziglins cannot escape either. And we could go ahead and put a water bucket here. As you see, flows all the way to the edge. What do we do next? Well, we just come down one more block like this and we do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Water source and one more time. This last one's gonna take you out past the edge that's good. That's absolutely perfect. That's what we want to do. Now do the same thing on the other side here, except make it all flow in that direction. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to our little center area right here, and we need to block the water in these two spots. So we just take something like a sign and block it, a sign and block it, and then punch out these two blocks right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come down one, two, three, and we want to make sure that our piglins always fall at the, the same height. So it's not possible that maybe one of them, I don't know, falls too far by like bobbing up in the air and take some additional damage. So what we're gonna do is we, we went down to three blocks. I'm gonna take a sign, a sign, put a water bucket right here, and that'll just give them a little bit of a filter. So when they fall, they will um, always count as falling from this height where they pass through the water. And then we're gonna go the rest of the way down to our platform. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand in the middle right here and we're gonna put a piston on the left, turn, piston on the left, turn, left, turn, and left, just like that. We could fill in the rest of this with whatever we want to. I think what I'm actually going to do here though, it'll make it so you can pick up the items no matter where you are, or not the items, but the XP, no matter where you are around here. The items will have like automatic pickup, right? Uh, we'll go ahead and use half slabs all the way around right here. And then if we want to, we could have a platform to travel anywhere around the bottom and XP will come out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come above. We're going to place a solid block on top of each piston. We're going to place a powered rail on each corner. We're going to place a observer 
looking at the powered rail. So just kind of get facing the powered rail and click on the edge of it like this, 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 and this. And then we need a lever for power. Um, I guess the easiest thing to do here would probably be to just bring a block over to the side like this, put a lever here. And now you can see when I flick this lever back off, the Trident Killer goes around in a circle, which is exactly what we want. And then we can even go ahead and plop in our tridents right now would be fine. Two, three tridents are okay. If you're not familiar with trident killers, the nice thing about them is the tridents do not take durability damage. We don't need to put impaling or anything like that on them because these zigglins, they're going to drop far enough to where they're only going to have enough health to take one hit from these tridents anyways. So this is our trident killer. As you can see, it works. If you've never used one before, basically these pistons move the tridents around in circles it counts as you the player hitting the mobs and if you hold a looting three sword in your hand while this happens you actually get the looting effect as though you were killing the mobs yourself it's a really nice thing if you've never used them before you'll love using them and then just to give ourselves a little bit of a walking around area we could go ahead and just kind of surround this and then obviously you would probably build some type of like barrier around it maybe make this into a cool looking room or something like that and then you can easily walk around anywhere and you'll get XP um, from the farm. Now, we do need to make an item collection system real quick. And for this, I am not going to show you how to make the entire system because you could put any type of like number of item systems here. You can use a, a single item sorter, like an item filter. You cannot filter your items at all. You can have a um, item filter take the, um, the gold swords out of this and smelt them down which i 1000 percent recommend you do because you actually get a lot of gold from that so i recommend making something to get the uh, gold out of the system uh, what we're going to do here let me uh let me give myself a little place to work from here and a little place to work from here this farm is fast okay you cannot have everything go into one hopper you need everything to come to four different hoppers like this so basically what you would have is some type of line of hoppers coming off of each one of these just like this and each one of these lines is going to go to their own set of chests or their own set of item filters if you don't do that you're probably going to find that your system gets backed up because it's too uh, it's too fast and we do need a way to pull the items from above we're gonna use a hopper mine cart for that i can just put a uh, rail right here put a uh, mine cart with hopper there and then you can push it in the middle. Usually the easiest and best way to do that is to get something like uh, fences like this. Put a fence here, here, and here. Knock out your rail. Push this guy over a little bit. Knock out that rock under it temporarily. Get it shoved up in the corner and then put that, put that hopper back. And now it's over top of all four of them. And you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. And it'll collect the items evenly from all areas and distribute that again fairly evenly out through these different chains so install the storage system that you want and let's go topside for the fun part before we get to the redstone here i would like to ask you guys if you want to support the channel there's a few ways you can do it the easiest and best way it's absolutely free is to drop a like and subscribe if you like the video give it a like it helps more people see it if you like the channel you want to see more videos click the subscribe button and turn on notifications other ways you can support the channel is to watch my survival empire series where i'm building this large empire right here go through and watch episode one to see more of what this uh, series is about it's pretty awesome we're building some cool things here including a lot of the farms i'm making tutorials on also if you want to monetarily support the channel if you like this video a lot you can drop a super thanks down below that is a uh, comment that leaves a donation along with it i do respond to all of those comments and i make sure i give a little extra thought to those ones since you guys were nice enough to donate so if this video has especially helped you out, leave a super thanks. We also have channel memberships down below. You can click the join button and become a member. Let's go ahead and let's jump back into the rest of the tutorial now. Okay, next thing we want to do is get our dispensers in. So to get those in here, I, I could go ahead and could place one right here facing in. I could put a temporary block above that and place another dispenser down on that. Get rid of the temporary block. Do the same thing right here. And on the other side, towards the inside area as well. That way we can make this farm as compact as possible. Once you have that part done, you can go ahead and connect the uh, the dispensers. Or yeah, the dispensers together just like this. Have glass running across to them on the uh, bottom one. And then we can pop this block out right here. And do the same thing 
on the well that was on the top one this is on the bottom one and do this for both sides and then we can tie these together like this tie these together like this and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come out one block and then go up a block right here have a piston face downwards right here and then have another solid block on the side of that like this right here now in front of your piston uh, what you're going to want to do is come down two blocks and put another piston facing down and then you're going to want to get a piece of obsidian and put it right there you can get rid of these temporary blocks like that put a piece of redstone not a piece of redstone put a redstone block right there take a repeater face it right here and then take some redstone dust put it here here and when you put this one here it's going to turn this thing into a clock why did it not turn it into a clock because because this is a this is not a sticky piston this needs to be a sticky piston now it's turned into a clock and the reason why we have this block right here is just so we can have an on off switch i can go ahead and place a lever right here turn this thing off now the cool thing about this clock is it is a variable speed clock meaning that if we leave it on one tick on the the repeater it's going to go the fastest speed but maybe there's reasons that you want to slow it down. Maybe you're on a slower mobile device. Maybe you are playing on a realm or a server and you want to be courteous to your realm mates. Maybe you want to run this when you have a lot of people online. That's OK. You can run this when you have a lot of people online. You just can't run it at top speed because it might cause lag if there's too many people on with too much going on in a server environment. So you could maybe drop it to three or four ticks, turn it on. And as you can see, Look how much slower this is going. It's not going to cause your server mates any lag. Fastest speed, the second fastest speed, third fastest speed, and the slowest speed right there. So keep that in mind that even if you're on a busy server, you could build something like this. Just run it into slower speeds. I have a lot of people to play on my servers. Shout out to Eternia and BMC peeps. Um, you guys can use this farm on those servers but you need to put it on the four tick speed to do so just because of how busy our servers are next thing we need to do is we need to add a we get rid of this block right here add a torch redstone torch right there um, and we're going to run redstone dust across and over and over redstone dust across and over and same thing right here so now we need to block the water in so we're going to take some fence gates to do that um, this side obviously is already blocked um, we need to block right here open the fence gate block right here open a fence gate block right here open a fence gate now water will flow right down into there same thing here we're gonna block here block here block here do the same thing on the other side now we can go ahead and put water buckets in each one of these bottom dispensers and we actually need the water to start in the out position so I could just take a lever here I usually like to take levers just in case something happens with you un unloading or loading chunks and you come back over here and the water is in instead of out um, you can come flick a lever and change that as you can see we got that one here done that one why didn't that connect back to this oh we didn't put our redstone dust over here um, here let's flick this one first before we connect it there so your water should sit like this and as you can see it is not flowing down into here we don't want it to flow down here because then it'll mess up our water flow here and uh, it could make the ziglins get kind of stuck or make them take longer to come down so it just makes the farm a little bit more efficient and then if you're doing my method where we are doing the uh, flint and steel um, it's time to add in the system for that now this depends on how much you're going to run this odds are you're probably going to want a lot of space it's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of material to craft all this up but it'll get you a lot of gold it's 100 percent worth it so what i usually do is something like this and i usually take it all the way up to the top of the portal and then i spend the time to get the iron um necessary the iron and the flint necessary to make my flint and steel and then fill all of those chests up to where you have flint and steel on all of them and this thing will run pretty solid for an overnight afk session or two a lot of you may ask is it worth it to enchant the flint and steel and add on breaking three it's not it'll take you more time to do that than it will to just make more flint and steel and throw it in here also some of you may ask can i use fire charges because you can get fire charges yes you can um you would want to put a block probably like right here and this will fire the fire charge and set the portal on fire um, it goes through them pretty quick though so usually not worth it unless you just have a whole bunch of them and you want to you want to just use them so now this thing should be ready 
we have our water out i have some flint and steel in here i know the flint and steel part could be a little bit painful so again if you have fire tick turned on you might want to use the lava method found in the navy nexus video that i linked in the description um otherwise you're going to make all the flint and steel you're going to fill this thing up and you're probably going to want to have some way to do like an on off switch here I recommend here. Let me just it, it'd just be better if I do it for you guys. Oh, also, I, I forgot to connect this up to the torch down bottom. Let's connect that up there. OK, let me make you your uh, torch tower real quick is going to be the best way to do that. I would just take something like a bunch of solid blocks, bring them right the way down. Get yourself a redstone torch and just knock out every other block. Put them in here just like this and then now if we take a lever and put it all the way down here we should be able to flick that oh let's turn on our trident killer let's pull out our looting sword is it working yet oh look we have it on the slowest we have it on the slowest mode let's let's crank this thing up let's crank this thing up oh yeah there we go look at him come look at him let's go down bottom yep they're falling and here let's put ourselves in survival mode not the marketplace now survival not only is this thing great for all the drops but we actually get a lot of xp from this thing too look at it we're already up to level 15. and then let's go take a look top side just to make sure we don't have any issues up top they're all spawning in nice and quick nice and quick and we can sit here collect all of our xp get ourselves a ton of drops and this is it the the farm's done it was it th this is one of the easier farms to build and it's the best way to just get yourself a ton of XP really quick and get yourselves a whole lot of gold. Now I've gone ahead and I've built this in my survival empire world. I am in a creative copy of that world right now. Just to show you guys, I have it here. And this is what I did with the flint and steel system. It holds quite a lot of flint and steel. And I even made myself a little method to be able to easily fill the flint and steel system up where I can stand here and I can craft the flint and steel really quickly and it loops around this little track right here and goes down into the chests. If you wanna see me build this farm in survival mode, I've built the entire thing in about two hours on a live stream. So I'll try to make sure to link that in the description down below. Also, um, I have not done it yet. So by the time you watch this video it may be about to happen here pretty soon, or it may have already happened depending on when you watch the video. Now this storage system right here, it's just a bunch of chests and I even came out of four separate hoppers. So those hoppers go down, those hoppers go down. This one goes to the side and over. This one goes to the side and over. And actually this is kind of after the fact for me like recording most of this tutorial it's actually still not this isn't fast enough to keep up with the amount of items that we have coming in so you're going to need to end up doing one of two things when you run this farm the thing i would probably recommend just to make life easy for you is to go up to uh this guy right here that i showed you earlier the clock and put it on two ticks if you put it on two ticks it'll keep up just fine absolutely no problems if you want to run it on a single tick then you're going to actually need to do two trident killers and basically you're just going to do the same thing i did here but instead put one on one side put one on the other and then you're going to have these guys right here that are coming in on this side you know they'll they'll drop in you'll do the same drop shoot but you'll you'll do it like i don't know about three four blocks over like right here and you'll you'll like you'll drop them down like here instead um, but it shouldn't be too hard to do. All you're going to do is just kind of change where the drop shoots are. You're going to have one on each side instead of one in the middle. If, and again, that is only if you want to run it at the fastest speed at a single, uh, tick on the repeater. Otherwise running on two ticks, this will work absolutely fine coming out of the four separate hoppers going into the storage. Now you may be wondering, Prowl, what are the rates to this farm right here? Well, let me tell you. So you're looking at about 70,000 gold nuggets per hour actually a little bit more than that about seventy thousand gold nuggets per hour that's not even counting what you're going to be smelting uh through with the swords when you add in all the gold nuggets all the swords and include all the ingots and you craft everything into ingots you're looking at about eight thousand seven hundred plus ingots per hour that's a lot of ingots so many ingots, in fact, that'll turn into about 15 stacks, 15 full stacks of gold blocks every single hour that you run this farm. Now, this farm, 
I just built it in survival yesterday, two days ago. I don't know. It was a couple days ago that I built this in survival. You can go and check the live stream. It's there. If you want to see the whole thing built, you can see it. As you can see, it's incredibly fast. It is awesome. It's going to get you all the piglins you are ever going to need, all the gold that you're ever going to need easily not even close so if you enjoyed this video go ahead and leave a like it helps the video get seen by more people a lot more people also click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel great way to show support and if you feel so inclined make sure you use that super thanks i appreciate everybody for hanging out and until the next one i'll see you later bye